Welcome back everyone to Casa Redux. I'm your host, Mr. Barak Zai, Empire Lover. And right now we're trying to help out the, uh, the Kingdom of Nepal, trying to fight the Dominion of Delhi, but it's not going so well for them. But we've got some comms to go through and uh, we got to pack your bags. Mohammed Aziz Khan, the Afghan ambassador to the Reich, has met with the Kaiser in Berlin to discuss limiting Germany's presence in Afghanistan. After a cordial conversation, the Kaiser has seen to it that the expedition will be greatly reduced in size in order to preserve the sovereignty of Afghanistan and ensure that the army is more reliant on their own people than foreign officers. Only a fraction of the Germans are remain in Kabul, as most of them return to their homeland. With gifts and our best wishes. Their departure does not spell the end of close relationship between the two countries, but us Afghans must take care of our own. Safe tidings. Um, I'd like to hop out here, but uh, it should be okay. There you go. Until they start attacking us like crazy down here, but it is what it is. Happy March 1st, 1938. We have the soldier Emir, um, which I read last time, so if you read about them, please go right ahead. Italian coming, eh? Uh huh. Interesting. So we saw this second Iron Emir. Nasrullah's father, Abdur Rahman Khan, was called the Iron Emir for his harsh totalitarian rule. Um, under him, there was no dissent, just determined citizens working to further Afghanistan. If Nasrullah is to achieve a lasting peace with his, within this country, then he must emulate his father in some respects. Oh, look at that. That's a lot more stuff here. Em emulate Aurangzeb. The ancient Mughal Empire, Aurangzeb, is known in the West as a religious tyrant and despot whose policies are looked upon unfavorably. They simply are wrong. Aurangzeb was a pious man who wanted to bring his subjects eternal paradise by bringing them closer to Allah. Nasrullah really knows this more than anybody else and will seek to emulate him whenever possible. The spiritual health of the people is critical for the spiritual health of the nation. The National Pastimes of Afghanistan. Uh, entrenchment, breakthrough. I seems like we might want more breakthrough. Especially if we have to be in the offense. So, although a few local sports of like cricket and football found minor to middling popularity among the Afghan, nothing could stop the sheer dominance that our local homegrown sports leagues hold. With two of our most popular of these local sports being uh, Buzkashi and Pelwani. Pelwani is one of the many names given to the local type of wrestling practice not only in Afghanistan but also across the subcontinent. Also called belt wrestling or the struggle in English, this from a traditional wrestling pulls both from Indian styles like Malayuda, from Persian styles like Koshti, Pal uh, Palavani and most recently from Mog Mongolian book and other similar forms from Central Asia and the steppe. It was largely popularized along the, across the region thanks to living titans like the great Gama, Bramdev Mishra, and Kodi Ramurthy Naidu, to name a few, cementing Afghanistan as one of the hotbeds of traditional Asian wrestling. On the opposite hand, from these feats of human strength and skill stands our other national sport called Buzkashi, in which two teams on horseback compete to toss a sheep or goat carcass into their respective goal. Common all throughout Central Asia, our former occupiers among the Anglos tried to replace the so-called barbaric past with their own version of the called Polo, but the latter never took off outside the wealthy elite and Afghan nobility. While well, Buzkashi was played by the masses, especially among the tribal clans. Not only are playing these sports on our own, both of them uh, include the newest attempts at our nation to work diplomatically with the outside world as professional and minor leagues are created with their nomadic brethren in places like Central Asia, Middle East, South Asia, and even as far as Eastern Europe and the steppe in order to compete on an international level while strengthening our similar cultures among these foreign kin. Commonly practiced by young men and often seen as a rite of passage, these sports are central pillars to traditional Afghan culture and they shall stay in, touch, uh, in such an honored place. Thanks for your support. Our continued efforts to further popularize these sports, not only across the nation, but our wider sphere of influence as well. Not like a day in the saddle, or not on the map. Yeah, there you go, not bad. We're still losing support. No, we're not. Fall of New Orleans. Uh, sucks for them. Uh, what do we got here? Not bad. What else do we need? We need more trucks. Well, we could probably buy some trucks. Trucks. Well... We have no convoys. What do you expect? He's a duck here. Oh! Well, we tried. Yep, and they're back. Welcome back. Not sure why I want to blitz you into there, but whatever. Uh, we'll see about this guy in a little bit later. Order restored in Siam. Look at that. And then what? Realize the Mughal ambitions? Continue the conquest of India? I like that one. The lands taken in India are still crawling with dissenters and rebels, even if they don't make themselves public. Imperialists of the British and Indian flavors, and Indian nationals, and general descendants of the Emir's Ruab made their area their home. Nasrullah finally decided to do something about this and ordered a Daroga to sweep the new territories for potential trouble areas with orders to deal with all problems promptly. Reports of executions in the streets are already pouring in and are only expected to get more frequent. Happy 1938, everybody. What's next? Or ornament the throne. Oh, the throne. 
Aurangzeb gained the nickname Ornament of the Throne for successful economic policies that made India the largest economy on the earth at the time, even surpassing Qing China. He even kickstarted a proto industrialization of Bengal. Most well while emulated success in Afghanistan, the economy is currently tattered, but Afghanistan is home to numerous valuable resources. While harnessing these resources and the various, look at that, uh, cottage industries across the nation, the coffers will be restored, and Afghanistan will not only know peace but prosperity, which we could absolutely use right now. Keep building up them civvies. Um, core territory, max entrenchment. Uh, let's go move a little faster, too. Wouldn't mind another research slot, that'd be pretty nice. And that's right here. The associate spread Islamic culture. Afghanistan is a mix of Indian, Central Asian, Islamic, and even ra a remnant of Greek culture. This cultural disunity cannot stand if Afghanistan is to continue to function. Nasrullah will set up a Department of Islamic Culture to promote and encourage Islamic culture in the areas it is weakest. New Islamic newspapers will be printed. Islamic or Islam will uh, replace uh, local languages. And uh, monuments of non Islamic heroes will be replaced or overshadowed by new ones. This is a heavy step to take. Uh, to suppress, suppress, uh, to suppress dissenting cultures in favor of our own, but the hardest choice was to take the strongest of wills. Replace Sharia. Um, a proposal has come from Nasrullah to impose Sharia law across all of Afghanistan. It's been with both celebration from the conservative elements of society and cleric while simultaneously enraging more liberal elements, particularly among those of, uh, those of the Hindus, and a spoken minority of supposed Nasrullah since he took the throne. If we go through this, they will surely fight back, and ultimately it's up for Nasrullah to decide. Huh. Ah, uh, Saudi Arabia. The world's pretty much peaceful except for these guys over here. Paternal Ots. Oh, we like paternal autocrats. Here, Mohammed. Figure out how you're gonna fight in Carlos Spain. Ooh. By fighting these guys and these guys, that should help us out with a lot more army XP then. But I'm not going to send anything over there because the supplies going to be so bad I don't even want to deal with it. Um, nice, nice. It's fair attack and defense, maybe. Mr. Cavalry himself. Honestly, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. We only have one division here. Send him somewhere around here. Good. Realize the Mughal ambitions. I think that'd be great. We are advanced, my friends. We have three research slots. Look at that. Trucks. We need some better RD eventually. That'd be nice. You know, our finest hour. We know about that. Please go ahead. Uh, I'm going to do this one probably last. Polish the jewel. Yeah, no. The fa uh, Fatawa Alamgiri. The Fatawa Alamgiri is a set of Sharia law put in place by Arangzeb throughout the empire. Now, Shula has put forward a proposal to adapt a modified version for this for Afghanistan. This has caused some debate among his advisors. These loyal to Nasrullah point out how it led the Mughal Empire under Aurangzeb to new heights economically and militarily, while also keeping resistance of Mughals repressed. That was the point that the Raj still uses a version of this as their own law. The proposal's enemies condemn it as too restrictive, too open to interpretation, and therefore unable to properly be enforced. However, it's up to Nasrullah to decide. A try. Right. Positioning. And the gold must flow. Use stability, better consumer goods factors, better consumer uh, resource efficiency gain, construction speed, factory output. For any state to function, it must collect its taxes. The ruggedness of Afghanistan has made this an issue for every one of its rulers. Now, Srila is determined to overcome this hurdle. A new system of tax collection will be instituted. To ensure all of Afghanistan's subjects pay their due to the crown, so the state may be properly maintained. It also causes considerable grumbling, especially for the tr among the tribes, who were unable to pay or slip away from the taxes for so long, but that price is was something we must pay. Declare new hints to any empire. Ooh. Victory. Why should we continue ourselves to be a backward tribal kingdom when we have the potential to lead our nation to greatness? We should replicate the glory of the Mughal emperors through a conquest of Hindustan. Onward to Delhi, we must, we must march. As the Afghan nation stabilizes itself from the chaos and war devastation, it is crucial that we begin a shift of focus outwards and solidify our ambition on the world stage. The vision belongs to those with the strength to seize it, and the Afghan people will choose a path leading to their empowerment. We only have 18 divisions. They're not that great yet. We did pretty well last time, but there they are in the Entente, and I want to attack them when they are at least expecting it. Russian Federation. Party of Kami. United Hindustan, huh? So we're going to wait for that one. Some comments include, though. 
Highly suggest that the Ottomans lose a war against the Cairo Axis because and then we can get some people who will flee to our government potentially. And then we can form a, a unique government with Ottomans, maybe. Uh, someone says we should place Maklik. Create an Islamic China, be a republic or monarchy. Someone says the war with Delhi is easier than you think. If you take the port in the south, think of the capital. It ends instantly. Someone also asks, can you do Kaiser, or Kaiser Redux Afghanistan and go at play as Amanullah Khan sometime and go to the middle tree titled Only the Young Afghan sometime. I'm sure I'll do it sometime. I'm not sure when. And then repose Sharia Law. Yeah, I'll do that one next. I'll show in a new golden age. Yeah, that's not bad. Especially for consumer goods. So I'm going to do this one next. I just want to do last because I still like that weekly manpower. It's really nice. Alright, so that's the case. Guns are good. Artillery is good. Trucks are getting better. Everything's getting better overall. Um, we have only one division being made, though. And we still have a thing for cavalry for now. Eventually, we'll switch them all to infantry, but still. Nice. Oh, usher in a new golden age. It was through their piety and adherence to the word of the Quran, the greatest scholars of the Eastern world were able to bring about what is referred to as the Islamic Golden Age. And Baghdad, Islamic scholars have brought great strides in art, uh, law, economics, mathematics, science, and philosophy to just name a few fields of study. Under the just and pious rules of Nasrullah Khan, scholars will arrive in Kabul and usher in a second golden Islamic age. Our government will provide the incentives to the scholars to allow them to conduct their studies here in Afghanistan. Through our efforts, we will become the shining light of the Islamic world. Great. Ground attack. Uh, let's go with this one. The Ukrainian Socialist Republic. Well, it's kind of handsome. Still, things are falling apart all around here. Nice. Oh, Mongol Mongolia's not having a good time. That's the Federation. They are enemies, so we should probably support these guys down south. Then. What if we took one for now? Nope. All right then. Oh, the Prince of Federation. Oh well, my bad. Dras. Where are we here? Um, I don't know if you're gonna be very successful here. You can look at it. Will you win? Oh, Ottomans under siege. Oh. Cairo Axis. We're in the desert. Let me guess, we're going to get an event saying that they want us to help them out, probably. Do they have any guarantee? Or do they have a guarantee? We might as well get some really good experience here. Kabul. I'm just gonna keep building up Kabul for now. Gold must flow. Cavalry defense, more blitz and encirclement tactics. Uh, probably cavalry expert for now. Oh, they did move pretty fast here. Uh, against five divisions? I don't know about that. Two artillery is nice. Happy 1939, basically. Ah, oh, they're doing their international. That's pretty much expected, you know. Did you actually win here, though? I doubt it. Maybe.
You learn him? Oh my god, we need you to learn a lot. Mm, attacking, I don't know, especially into tanks. Not necessarily a good idea, you know. Here. Uh, I guess we do want to keep working on air XP, I guess. I don't think supporting the attack is going to do very much for us, but we could try. Well, there it is. Uh, cavalry. We actually threw on some regular cavalry to help us out a little bit. Um, recon doesn't really help out that much. We motorized artillery. Could be very good for us too. A row of piety and temperance. Aurangzeb was a deeply pious man, much like Nasrullah. He cut down on the pomp and circumstance of the Mughal court and to donate more to charity in local mosques. Nasrullah, emulating this great man, will do the same. The decadence of his predecessor will be curtailed, and the money saved will be donated to the newly established Afghan Prosperity Fund to, and to the mosques. Some of all crews Nasrullah have donated mosques to reward his cleric allies. Nasrullah has no comment on such baseless accusations. Oh, I forgot about all this stuff up here too. Whoops. Us on the world stage. Whoopsie. Oh, we can go straight to war with them. Creating a lasting friendship. My bad. Well, we're going to finish our focus sheet first. Whatever. I don't care. One thing at a time. You actually have a chance to win here. Find ourselves on the world stage. Yeah, you're learning though. Because we still get a little more attack and defense here with these guys. Still not great, but still. Alright, so you're really sucking here. You're about to get completely encircled. These reds came to play, man. Ooh, boy. I wouldn't mind going to war with these guys. If they beat up the Ottomans, then we can... Hmm, I don't know. I mean, he's in the Tabriz Accords. Tabriz Accords. Oh, maybe. Where are we? Polish your jewel. To help integrate the new territories, we'll begin to set up a development fund for the new areas. By direct investments, we will slowly intertwine these new areas into the new homeland, and by the goodwill of the locals. It'll take a while, and the locals will likely hinder our effort, but it's an effort that must be expanded if all Afghanistan is to be won. grow a beard like that. Well, that's not in my genes. Guarantee independence. Huh. Well, they certainly kill themselves. We love it. Polish your jewel. Alright. So we got all that, that part of the push down. I wish we could get rid of these other trees. I mean, they're important and all, but like, we don't need to see them. Oh! Rebuild the Afghan royal army. Oh, look at that. We have a good to do too. Cavalry legacy. Kyber Gunsmiths. I should have looked at this more. Huh. 
34 in arms. The research law would be pretty good too. Arriving in the Afghan Air Force. A birth of the Afghan Navy, oh boy. Well, I want to go to war with Iran probably. So, with the political situation finally stabilized, we can look outwards towards Afghanistan's role in the wider world. Utilizing our unique position in the crossroads of Asia, the might of Afghan eagle will finally take flight. We'll look to the west with our old allies in Berlin and Constantinople, forge alliances with our Islamic brethren in the north, and meet with the emerging nations of the east. Hey, we got trucks. Good. Boop, boop. Um, I actually probably want to get some mountaineers. Oh, we have mountaineers. We can get better ones, though. Engineers up would be so very vital. Quite vital. Uh, what are we lacking here? A spot of aluminum? That's fine. Good. Let's see. You're still attacking. That's kind of crazy. Here, help him out. Might be able to win here still. Maybe, maybe not. It's fine. Good. Happy 39, everybody. Mechanize. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good defensive position to have. Because we still need an Air Force. No matter what. Take them out, take them out. That's good. Nice. You know, you might be able to win here, maybe. These guys are getting attacked, though, which is not ideal. But whatever. An Afghan alliance? Oh, look at North. Should we throw my weight behind one of the world's great powers, joining one of their alliances, and rising to the world stage as a subordinate of some greater united force, or should we push forward towards our own destiny by ourselves, creating a new alliance led by us and with Afghan interests truly at the heart above all other pursuits? Also, they you leave us without the backup of a superpower. They give us the freedom to do as we please on the global stage without the risk of getting dragged into foreign wars. What shall we do? Formula to Kabul Pact. Keep our options open and join one of the global alliances. I wouldn't mind that. I like Kabul Pact. Sounds like fun. Ah, let's get some better planes. Yeah, we definitely need better planes. Ah, look north. What contact with uh, Bukhara? Similar to Afghanistan, Turkestan is a rugged land deeply rooted in the Islamic faith. In addition, both lands have served as an intermediary for some of history's greatest empires. If we left Afghanistan to global prominence, we must first sort out our situation with our northern neighbors in Turkestan. Look west. That was in 1919. We joined forces with the victorious central powers and liberated our nation from the clutches of the British Empire. As we set out to expand Afghanistan's role on the world stage, we'll look towards the west and meet with our old allies in Berlin and Constantinople. By strengthening our bond with our historic allies, we can greatly expand our nation's global influence. Sign the Topkapi Pact. War is looming in the Middle East. The old Ottoman order finds itself threatened by the emerging Cairo Axis, an absurd alliance of Egyptians, Iranians, and Arab tribes. These seemingly desperate groups have all united towards the destruction of the Caliphate. With each power having their own designs for carving up the Middle East, Afghanistan's sovereignty finds itself threatened. To discuss the future of this Middle East, our two nations will hold a summit at the historic Top, uh, Top Kapi Palace. Here all pledge your support to the Caliph. Can we take these guys on? Ottomans are not doing well. Oh, they're really, really, really not doing well. That's not good. I mean, don't get me wrong. We can maybe get them here with us and whatnot, but I really want to take out Iran. I don't know if anyone, Iran would have another like, neighbor, but I still want to take out these guys, too. If these guys go to here, we'll avoid these guys. That'd be fun, but still. Eurasian block, huh? National police, please. Interesting. Wow, they are demolishing Istanbul. Well, hmm. March on Bukhara. Bear awakens. These all to bypass, anyways. With every passing day, the Russian bear eyes Central Asia with a hungry gaze. But still looking at their wounds, it's evident that the Russian nation is rebuilding. And once again, they seek to help subjugate the free nations of Turkestan. In a move against the Russian aggression, they will propose an alliance with the government of Bukhara.
establishing our control. The Aral Agreement. I would join Russia if we were not already in a faction. We need to establish a united front. The Bakai Invitation. Start with Shud of Islam. Well, we are a little bit too late for that, all that stuff. Huh. Look east. Support Tibet. Created a lasting friendship. It was through the tacit support of the German Empire that we were able to free ourselves from the clutches of the British Empire and liberate our brethren across the Duran Line. In the years following, Germany has continued to be a valuable partner to the Afghan people, supporting us through the extension of the Hentic Niedermaya mission and coming to our aid once during uh, the Fourth Anglo Afghan War. By encouraging cooperation between both nations, we'll strengthen the unique friendship um, between the Germans and the Afghan people. Good. Can they turn it around at all? Holy crap, that's kind of insane to see. Uh, could have touched this worth it. That's not worth attacking there. This might be able to do something here. How, how's Carlos doing? Oh, well, we got in circle. That's good, at least. Thanks for holding. Oh, yeah. Expand the Deutsche Afghanische. A company. The Deutsche Afghanische Company, or Dachholm, has been crucial towards the economic growth of the nation. We work closely with our German contacts to greatly expand the Dachholm and encourage foreign investment. With the financial support of the keen industrialists of the Kaiserreich, Afghanistan can truly prosper. Absolutely. That breaks engines, yes. Iran's not doing that well. Ah, they fucked. Oh. Okay then. That that's a lot of land taken from them. Ah, Iraq. You guys actually win here? I don't know if you guys actually you just let the territory open. Guys. Guys. Finland. Crap. Get your soldiers in. Oh my god. You're about to get our soldiers in the circle, aren't you? Yeah. Well, they did well against our people here. Makes sense. So, they're our main opponent right now, so. An offer from the Warrior Prince. We have received a secret offer from Osman Fuad Effendi, the Warrior Prince of the House of Osmanoglu and the grandson of the late Great Sultan Murad V, who wishes to use Afghanistan as a staging ground for his future efforts to reclaim the Ottoman throne. Should we allow his brave soldier of Islam to work to rebuild their long legacy from Kabul, or should cast off these relics of a bygone era to the dusty pages of history where they belong? Let him in. Invite him in. Ottoman officials, who were still loyal to the Sultanate, have found their ways to Afghanistan after the fall of the Ottoman Empire. These desperate soldiers and officers and administrators are loyal to Osman Fuad Effendi, the warrior prince who has refused to give up any claims to the Sultanate despite Abdul Misset's abdication. Honoring our tra ancient traditions of Pashtuanli, we will welcome our fellow brothers of this faith to the, our mountain home. Oh, that's great. A military factory would be nice too. A synthetic factory. Renewing negotiation expeditions. 
first arriving in 1950 in the Niedermaya, Hentig Expedition. I played a crucial role in the fostering of Afghanistan's close ties with the German Empire and development of our nation. Under uh, the guidance of Oskar Niedermeyer and Werner Otto von Hentig, our antiquated forces have begun to modernize along the lines of the Kaiser's victorious army to honor the Sverok Agreement. We will ask Germany to extend the expedition, allowing us to reform our army further. Well, I said no initially. Can you guys break out here? Ha'il? You might just be able to get him. Come on. Hey, we got him. Look at that. Can you actually beat the crap out of these guys? I don't believe you can, but... Falls LA. That was pretty risky there. Oh, this is bad, too. You guys are idiots. Do better. We do not need supply problems. Yep. World War, whatever, is kicked off. Interesting. Iran. You know, since we're here, yeah, why not? Become spy master. I'm sure we could use it. Nice. You make a gambit, a gamble. There you go. Good. Still have the conspiracies of old? That would be bad. The Kaiserreich and Afghanistan have enjoyed a long history of diplomatic missions and expeditions between two nations. Through these missions, our German allies provided us with military and technological expertise while we both plotted towards bringing an end to Irish British rule in India. Let us celebrate, celebrate these efforts with the innovations that came with them. Germans. Two front war again. And they're fighting third international there too. That's pretty bad. That's gonna be a very tough fight for them. That's why we fix on ourselves instead. The Germans are just having a tough time right now, man. Woo! Great. We're gonna go for the next one anyways. Boop, and fighters, speed, agility. Oh, come on, you should have gotten that. Yep. Gotta know when to not do that. Boop, boop. Yeah, that's what I figured as much. God dang it, you idiots. Same thing again, man. These guys are really tired, though. I'm waiting for these guys to go to war. Ali Ahmad Khan. Should be able to break out. The new uh, Fleischer Khan Agreement. In 1893, Gebhard Fleischer, a Kudup engineer, secretly met with Emir Abdul Rahman Khan. Under the nose of the British Empire, we were able to greatly expand our nation's arms manufacturing capabilities. While the agreement bring, began to bear fruit, the engineers were assassinated by agents of the British Empire. But the close ties with the German Empire will honor this old agreement and bring corrupt expertise back to Kabul once again. A few more guns. Force in the defense too, huh? I'm never really desperate for this. What is here? How are we doing here? Eid? Nice. Can we actually win here? Oh, nice. 
drauf. Hey, they moved up though. So I got that going for them. <laughs> they really don't want to lose it. They're playing both the Germans and the Russians. I'm surprised we're holding out this well, actually. Now we're starting to lose the supply. Renew expedition negotiations. Arriving in 1519. Have you read this? Mission to the Indian Ocean. Across the Indian Ocean lies one of the Reich's most important colonies, Deutsch Ostasien. The colony's vast rubber plantations have made the colony one of the largest producers of rubber in the world. On the seas, the Ostasiestische station is on a constant alert against the imperialist ambitions of the Japanese Empire. Let's end up with mission to help build up our nation and naval force and get ourselves a stake in the production of rubber. I think that'd be great. Mm, might be easier to take this one out than the other one. God, they're really trying so freaking hard, aren't they? Darn, so war resumes. That's fine. Oopsie. Oh, crap. We definitely don't want that. Well, let's make sure something else I'm heavy. That's fine. I'm surprised we were able to actually hold out that entire time. That's actually kind of impressive. Now don't leave and push him back over the river and stay there. Hmm. Could you win here maybe? Potentially. How's Germany doing? Oh man, they're being pushed in already. Yeah. That's not surprising. Ottoman Empire's now between autocrats. We do what we can for now. Well, cavalry. Good enough for them. Good. Royal Guard. Definitely want some engineers on these guys too. Good. Nice. So we're probably out of stuff now. Yeah. Nice. Good stuff. I don't want Germany to collapse before this all happens. Oy. The visit of the Dar es Salaam regime. The German colony of Middle Africa is the most daunting colonial experiment that has ever been attempted. The colony's vast riches are only equipped by the revolts that it faces on a daily basis. We have sent a diplomatic mission to Middle Africa to encourage close cooperation between the two nations. The colony's expertise in putting down insurgents could help us here at home, and its natural resources would greatly bolster our economy. Mm hmm. Hmm. Well, the Carlos look like they're doing all right for now. But a lot of feelers out. You get a lot of XP and whatnot. Madras is not doing bad either. Not doing great, but not bad. Especially those engineers are going to help out a lot, too. I want the Anton to go to war at least first before we go to war with them. At the very minimum. There you go. Nice job. Attacking here would not be super smart, but we're going to do it anyways for now. I don't think attacking here is going to be smart either. But we're winning! So far ish. Ish. Nice. That helps us out. Visit Dar es Salaam, yes. 
actually able to win here. Good. What? A shield for a sun. Not only Afghanistan, but the independence of Asia as a whole remains threatened by the rising sun in the east. The Japanese Empire is plotting to enslave the entirety of the continent under the guise of liberation for the west. The only way to contain the expansion of Japanese imperialism is through a close relationship with the German Empire. May the cause of the Reich and the brave fighters of, Jap uh, brave fighters of Afghanistan stand as a bulwark against a formidable Japanese threat. Toast, a loyalty to toast. A cordial accord. While we have fostered closer ties with the Kazakh for decades, both of our two nations rightfully understand that we must decide our own destiny on the world stage. While still honoring our special relationship, we'll stay at arm's length with the Kaiser and honor our respective series of influence. We'll celebrate the victorious Kaiserreich and long may our two nations reign supreme. Yeah, that seems pretty balanced to me. Seems pretty good. Okay, you can actually probably win here then. Yeah, if they throw another division in there, maybe not. He's learning. He's actually learning quite a bit. That's actually really good. Look at that. We need this one. Um, cannons I like to. I like these things too. Happy 1940, everybody. A lot of different states here. Germany, oh, we're doing okay. They're trying to hold on the Rhine. Poland has been taken out. It's not bad. How are we doing here? Attacking over a river, becoming an organizer. That's good. Fall of Rome. Ah. Some will be different. Albania is gone. Shoot for the sun. I know. I'm sorry. I apologize for not getting involved in any sort of war, but we got to be smart about this. Shock and all, definitely. And it gives us time to build up our soldiers too. More and more and more and more and more. Artillery pieces are looking nice. We're gonna start doing this too. Royal guard. It's gonna destroy how much artillery we have. But that's all right. Boom. Actually, that's not as bad as I thought. Still somehow winning a little bit here. Um, you're not really put in a really good position. Not really. He's looking pretty good overall. What are we missing here? Proof carrier, small airframes. It's not bad, don't get me wrong. But... Does anyone have any artillery? Well, the mine gets some anti air as well. Nice. Uh huh. Let's go up there. See what's going on up here. Three divisions. You're attacking with one. Not smart. From up here, one division. There's five up there. Wow. Still not smart. There's only three. Yeah, no, not smart, not smart. Gotta play the game smartly. At least a little smart, like. Yeah. What's going on over here? Three divisions, three divisions, yeah. Yeah, record to record. Just kind of seeing what our options are, you know? It's always nice to have options, isn't it? Oh, we get attacked too. Look at that. Hopefully, we don't get encircled here. Uh, I guess you can help out here, why not? Argentinian free territory, huh? So let's take a look, see what's going on here. You guys are fighting Transcaucasia. Which is still not a bad time for us to go to war with these guys, too. Kind of like them. Quarter million manpower, 10 to 47 divisions. They're split. They don't have a lot of manpower. 155 days. I gotta keep this one open. Oh. Is it war? Of the Egyptian Republic. Answer the clarion call. Oh, I guess we had. The desert war has begun. The Ottoman Empire now faces the battle for its very survival. As it faces its evasion from all sides, keeping true to our promises. And the. A cop, top copy pack. If Gaston will enter the war on the side of the Caliph, we'll recover the sublime port's flank, launching an invasion of the Shiite dogs in Iran. Well, just in case, we got enough political power. We're going to justify, anyways.
How's Germany faring? Cypher broken. These guys too. Go shift divisions over and see where, we're, where they're at. Might still do okay against them, maybe. Uh, Mountaineers. Oh, we definitely need some Mountaineers. Motorized divisions, tribal militia, uh, royal guards. Yeah. No regular infantry. It's gonna be kind of costly, but it could be a lot worse, actually. I'm not super worried about manpower that much. Um, logistics are okay. Signal companies could be pretty decent too. Let me continue going with this. We already have them, so. This might actually win here, maybe. Especially throwing our guys in. Yeah, they're, de they're definitely learning a lot. I guess we can send volunteers to Germany, too. But then we're d playing both sides here. Republic of Italy was annexed. Oh, this third international is becoming pretty darn strong. Interesting. Then the Adria Bo uh, who are you guys fighting? The Reds? Third international? Yeah. So, it's June. Oh, God. They go to war soon. We built the Afghan Royal Army. With the initial investments from the Emir Habibullah, the Afghan army has made nascent efforts towards the modernization of its equipment and tactics. With the new government entrenched, we should look to dictate the direction of our armed forces towards modernity or tradition. Oh. Holy crap, we need a lot more artillery, don't we? Oh, yeah. It's not like we're making subs anyways, but still. Oh, supply loss is not good. There you go. It'll be a very red world in this campaign. You might be able to win here, maybe? Hey, we went up a level, that's good. Yeah, Germany's definitely going to collapse. Austrian Empire's doing okay. For now. They've got a lot of res to take out, though. Two-front war? Oi. Nepal declared war on the Kingdom of Sight. Uh, Sikkim, I should say. Sikkim, I guess. Group infantry equipment... Now you do this? Death of King Jean the Third. Oh, on Russian front. Well, unfortunate. Good. So we rejected the modernists. It'd probably be best not to go that route. Hiring Western officers, I would prefer, honestly. Because it just makes more sense. But cavalry legacy is probably the way we're going to go. King of the Mountain. Even though that's really good. Rely on tribal chiefs. Suppose the army reforms are cheap and ineffective. Without loyalty to its individual tribes, the Afghan military cannot expect to receive or support from its people. We have triumphed against many foes of the current structure. Why change? Why change that? What works? Oh, that's going to be painful, isn't it? Better reinforce rate. And then cavalry legacy. Afghan horses are some of the finest breeds in the world. It would be a shame to abandon the use of such fine seeds in our military. While the world may progress beyond the needs of cavalry, their uses are still many fold in the mountains of our nation and will continue to implement them in our modern military. 
and implement the Hasht Nafari. We need more men to keep our war machine running. The Nash Nafari, or 8th person, is a conscription plan which allows tribal leaders to pick out one of every 8th person to serve in the military as their teeth to our nation. Kings of the Mountain. In these mountains, our ancestors defeated the mighty Alexander for generations. We defended our home against the Greek, the Persian, Anglo, and many other would-be conquerors. We know these mountains better than the corners of our own homes, and these mountains will be the grave for any foolish soul that dares across into our borders. Oh, because McLeek. Goodbye, McLeek. Finally. Oh, just after we spin all that arm XP too, god dang it. Dang it. Iran, Iran, Iran. Supplies are pretty bad. Uh, that's okay over there. We'll see. Death of a craft of the martial tribes of Afghanistan, most notably the Pashtun. The Jizayal is a beloved uh, cultural icon as well as a dependable weapon. Handcrafted and passed down through generations, most of our young men are familiar with these uh, flintlocks and prefer to use them above anything else. However, with the developments of the world around us, the Jizayal is quickly becoming more and more of a relic. While the craftsmanship cannot be denied, they cannot live up to the modern counterparts on the battlefield. This was shown in full display during a recent war against the Anglos, with the war's weapons being outranged by the more reliable and standardized Lee Enfield rifles. When may have triumphed against the British once, we cannot be compl become complacent. With the new reforms of our Afghan army, uh, it is with a heavy heart that we must standardize our army's weapons and do away with a jizal in our army. We've already been being met with resistance, as senior military meetings explode into vicious arguments. Several tribe leaders and more conservative members of the army have been in uproar over these changes, pledging to resist such developments so that destroy the heritage of our nation. Yep, we cannot control the world around us, and if we are to protect the sovereignty of our nation, we must ensure that every young man in our army has the tools he needs to defend our beloved country. Perhaps it can still be found in military parades. Or used in them, at least. Look at that. Cavalry officer almost. Which is pretty good. Of course, we're going to rely on the tribal chiefs. Yeah, the poor Jeff. My god, Austria just gave up here. It's a very red world versus the Russian Republic. It was led by a bunch of national populists. For now. Are you killing yourself? Stop killing yourself so much, please. Eight hundred some odd. Still trying to buy some more. There goes Bulgaria. Goodbye, to Bulgaria. The Eurasian block's doing very well. The Eurasian block's going to win. Yeah, it's going to be these guys versus these guys. Uh, when do we get this done? About a month. Engineers are good. I want to hit them harder with better artillery too. Cannot forget about that. Kings of the Mountain? Sure. And then build the war machine. In order to keep up with the industrial yards in the western cities that turn out weapons of war with, war with ease, we need to create our own factories and plants to create a self-sufficient army. Without these measures in place, we'll be at the mercy of foreign interlopers and profiteers. This cannot be true of a triumph in the coming conflict. Instead of the Anglo-Afghan Wars. No matter the outcomes of the Anglo-Afghan Wars, the British are a tenacious bunch. No doubt, they've been studying the outcomes of their tactics against ours. It would remain or mice, or mace not to do so. Um, Oh, give us a second here. And our war colleges must dive deep into strategy and tactics of these wars in order to better refine our military theory. Absolutely. Nice. And we also develop a decent plane. Oh, hello. Yeah. We're still researching anything here. No, good. Three. Um, I'm not sure which is the best. That breaks armor plates. Still feeling fuel tanks. I 
All right, we can do that one too. Fighters, heavy machine guns, heavy machine guns, and more light machine guns, maybe. There you go. Fall of Azagreb. Cairo Axis. Oh, hello. Oh, yeah. Fall of Berlin. Yeah, it's a really red world. So, whatever. Austria's dead, basically, too. Ah, oh, good. Well, I'm glad you guys stayed with us. Holy crap. That's kind of nuts. Good job, Reds. Union of Britain, wow. Oh, God. Third International, wow. That's insane. That's actually ridiculously strong. Holy smokes. Kingdom of... Ah... Oh, they're going to war with the entire Cairo access. Interesting. Just in time, of course they would. Very interesting. Are you guys ready for this? We could be. Supplies are not very good down there. Can we do well here? That's so why we could push into here and maybe invade Iraq? We'll go to war with Downtown next. We'll see what happens. If it doesn't go well, then... We'll see what happens after that, you know. Should be able to do okay, at the very least. Maybe not down here perfectly, but you know. Concentrate your forces. Concentrate them. Sure. Um, no, we're okay for now. Where are you going? What not? How about here? What's going on here? So, we've lost a couple guys. Trans cookies at 55,000. Wow. That's quite a few. How about right here? Kings of the Mountain? Why not? Ooh. That's pretty tough to take, isn't it? They declare one of the parts of the economy. Boop. And you don't even have the range for this, but whatever. Yeah. Interesting that they're doing that. I see I can see why they are, but still. Weapons, nice. Grab these guys too. Losses, a hundred. Oh my god. Oh, Transcaucasia is destroying them now. Hopefully. Eid, yes. Hell's fighter, great. Great, great, great. Uh, we need supply. And we need to connect it right now. This is the most important thing to do. Jump out with artillery losses. Oh, I'd recommend getting across here first. Get into the port and you'll be potentially okay. Interesting, good. Good, even more soft attack. It's gonna be even harder and harder and harder and harder. God, if I, I, hate, I hate fighting land wars in the Middle East. First fight elite forces. Conventional forces simply are another combat that oncoming through. We must innovate. Yeah, that's fine. Um, yeah, we're doing okay. And then modern warfare. The world of warfare is always changing. While our army may be up to the world standard now, the most beneficial changes we have made have ensured that we have the most military infrastructure to continue to adapt to a volatile world. Our war colleges are arrived with our brightest minds, and they'll continue to protect Afghanistan for many years to come. But I think I'll end it there. We're not going to continue this war off screen and whatnot, and I think we might actually do it fine. You know. Um, with them in a two-front war, they're actually pushing hard against Transcaucasia. They don't like us very much, but we don't like them either, so it doesn't really matter to us. And they're out of equipment, so any damage we do, it doesn't look like they can really replace. So, if you enjoyed the video, though, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. I'll also continue trying to make Iran basically under us, and maybe go to war with the uh, Dominion of Delhi. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.